Vengeance. Vengeance. Welcome to another video guys. Today I'm gonna teach you how to set up your deck tracker like a pro and activate all of the cool features that are gonna save you tons of time and help you win more gains. In my coaching sessions, the first thing I always do is check if the person I'm coaching is actually using Hearthstone deck tracker to its full potential. And in this video, I will teach you how to do that as well, so stick around. I would really appreciate it if you drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And also, let me know in the comments which Hearthstone deck tracker feature you didn't know about. Now, let's get into the video. Firstly, I wanna say that deck tracker really is an essential part of Hearthstone nowadays. And I really do believe you need to be using it if you really wanna be competing at a high level. Deck Tracker just helps you do so many things and track so much information with a glance of an eye, and it's just such an important part of competitive play nowadays. So make sure you're not handicapping yourself by not using it to its full potential. Yeah, I know that there are people that say that they don't use Hearthstone Deck Tracker at all, and they can track all of that information in their head. But those are the same people that say that they don't pee in the shower. So yeah, we pretend we believe them, but we all know what's happening. I honestly think it's impossible to be tracking all of the information that Deck Tracker will be helping you track. And even if you think you're tracking it, you're probably messing up half of the time and just don't care about it too much. So do yourself a favor and just get yourself a Deck Tracker. If you don't know what a Deck Tracker is by now, here's what it is, and here's where you download it from. With the Deck Tracker, it obviously is gonna be tracking your deck, your opponent's deck, it's gonna help you track your opponent's hand, and also it's gonna be a huge help for you to figure out what secrets you have been playing around. But be careful with this one, because some secrets are tricky for it, and it might fool you sometimes. Reckoning is a good example for a secret that is not very well tracked by Hearthstone Deck Tracker. And also, a Mage's Rigged Fair Games also sometimes is feeling pretty wonky with the Deck Tracker, so you will still have to make some effort to track what your opponent's secrets are. You also can use it to watch your replays, you're gonna have your match history, and it also is gonna get your collection updated to its database, and it can even help you pick a deck that you probably have most of the cards for. Okay, so here's my deck tracker. First thing you wanna do is head on down to options, and here the first important thing you wanna check is general. The important option here you wanna tick would be the height timers, and make sure it's not ticked, because if it is, you will stop seeing your timers here. For me, it's pretty important to see how much time I have left, so I know how much time I have to actually precise my play. Right now I'm playing against the innkeeper, so this is the infinite mark, but the timers also track how much time your opponent has been thinking and how much time you have been thinking. Also make sure you have the advanced options checked at the bottom, so you can see all of these advanced options in green. Right now we're not really gonna mess around with these, but later on we will. Now let's go down to player. Here we have a bunch of counters that track the old Katoon counter, spell counter so you know how many spells have been cast for the discounted old giants, Jade Golem counter, Pogo Hopper and Galakron counter too. They're not too important but for wild I guess they're okay. Here's the first big option that a lot of people actually don't use. Show board attack counter. Which is really cool because it actually pops up this little tab here which shows you how much damage you have on your own board. And as soon as I play the Spirit Jailer, and my next turn goes, this thing is gonna count how much damage I have on my own board. Which is one, I know, shocking. <laughs> Even though it doesn't seem that amazing with one minion on the board, as soon as you have seven on the board, you will be able to spot lethals with the glance of an eye, and you will have enough time to actually plan out your turn completely so you can maximize all of your outs. It's also cool to have the highlight last drawn card here, because as soon as you start drawing cards, your deck tracker is actually gonna flash before you even see the card. And that is actually gonna save you a lot of time, especially if you're using cards like Skullaguldan, Secret Passage, and so on and so forth. Because as soon as you play that card, all of the cards will flash here, and you will have enough time to actually think about what you're going to be doing with those cards. Notice when I press the hero power how my deck tracker card will flash first before we actually see it here. There you go. We actually saw that the armor vendor is coming before even the animation finished. And like I said, as soon as you play a secret passage, all four cards will flash at the same time, and you will know exactly what you're getting while that super clunky and slow 5 second animation is resolving. So that's gonna save you a ton of time to actually precise your play. Other than that, you wanna tick all of these at the bottom, so you have the deck title, here it is. Also you wanna tick on the wins so you can keep track how much you got. Cards is actually the deck tracker. With the card counter you're gonna see with the glance of an eye how many cards you have in your hand and how many you have left in your deck. 
so it's a good idea to have that turned on. With draw chances, you will know what is your percent chance of top decking a card if you only run one copy of it, or if you run two. So for instance, right now I have a 7.7% .7 chance to top deck Cascading Disaster on my next top deck, and a 3.8% chance to top deck Isharge for instance. And you also have Fatigue Counter, which is gonna show you how much damage you will be taking on your next card draw with an empty deck. Now let's go down to Opponent. Again, I'm reminding you that you need to have your advanced options ticked, and that way you're gonna see this slider here, Secret Scaling, which is basically gonna control how big your opponent's secret tab will be. Usually it's on 100, but that covers up a lot of game space, so I dragged it down down to 66, and you might wanna do the same too. Again, we have the counters for Katoon and stuff like that. And now here's the really important part. This thing has to be unticked, because it shows you for how many turns your opponent has held his cards. Right now we can see that the innkeeper kept his entire starting hand because it has zeros. If he changed his cards it would be with M's, meaning that they are gonna be randomly mulliganed cards he didn't really keep and he didn't really chose. Uh, we also see that this is the card he drew on turn 1 and you can also see the icon that he has the coin, but we already knew that. This coin icon is the card marks. And you also want to have that unticked so you know what your opponent is having when he starts generating things. You also want his secrets to be not hidden. And again, you can turn on your opponent's board attack counter so you know exactly how much your opponent has against you for his next turn. And that way you can plan around how much damage you can be taking and how risky of a play you can make without being threatened by the opponent's lethal. This here centers the deck vertically, not very important for me. You also want to have the included created cards for the opponent so you can keep track of those. And you also might want to highlight discarded from deck cards, which will be shown in red here when you play a Ticketus for instance or when your opponent just mills a card. And at the bottom, again, you want to tick on win rates so you know what your percentage is against that class. Cards so you can see what he has played. Card counters so you can keep track how many he has in hand and also how many he has left in deck. Draw chances so again you know what are his odds of top decking a card if he's running one of it or two of it. And also in these draw chances you also get a percentage what is the chance your opponent has a card in his hand if he has one copy of it in his deck or two. Which is also pretty invaluable and it's gonna help you decide if you need to be playing around a certain card or not. And again you have the fatigue counter so you know how much damage your opponent's gonna be getting on his next draw without any cards left in his deck. Those are the main features you need to know about for the deck tracker, but let's check out a few other good options you need to know about. For instance, in the notification tab, you might want to disable all the notifications from deck tracker because those can be pretty annoying. And also, you might want to show the experience counter so you know how far you have for your next quest reward. Usually it shows around here, but since this is an innkeeper game, I guess that doesn't give any XP, so it doesn't show anything right now. Also recently they have added a little notification that pops up here when you start a new game for a mulligan guide, and if you're annoyed by those every single game, you can disable them from here. From the hotkeys tab, there are a bunch of ways you can interact with this section, but for now I'm only using one hotkey, so I can turn on and off the overlay, and that's pretty neat. You can also mess around with the appearance from the appearance tab, and if you didn't know by now, I'm a huge fan of the dark and red combo. And let's not forget you have the search bar from where you can literally find everything in the options menu. And that's gonna help you navigate a lot easier if you don't remember exactly what you're looking for. So those are the options, but there's also another cool feature that a lot of people are missing. From stats, you can go to constructed, and here you can check out all of the matches you've played. And since I'm playing in a top 200 meta, I'm playing against the same people over and over again. And I can easily kind of have an idea what am I playing against as soon as I see my opponent's name. If I write down Gabby for instance, we can see that I played against his priest and I actually won. Hmm. But I can also see all of my history against Gabby over the months, so I can have a better idea of what I might be playing against. If I switch over to Phenomeno for instance, I can see that every time I face him, I will be playing against his Celestial Alignment Druid. And I can even see all of the cards he has been played against me while that game lasted. So this is definitely a pretty cool feature for Higher Legend players who are facing the same people over and over again. You can also see the summary of what opponents you have been facing this season and so on and so forth. So definitely fool around with this section. So that's gonna be it for this video guys, hope this helps you unlock Deck Tracker's full potential. A like and a subscribe would really be appreciated and it would be awesome if you drop by my stream as well. Thanks for watching, I'm Crystal5 and I'll see you in my next video or stream.